Welcome to Electra Online. Now we have something very challenging. The idea, of course, is that you try to do this on your own. Then when you get into trouble or you don't know which way to go next, then you take a look and see how to actually do it. Well, what we have in front of us is three identical cylinders, each with mass M. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And each with radius R, which are situated parallel to each other inside a bigger cylinder with radius big R. Now the question is, what is the angle between the normal of the bottom two cylinders and the vertical line? So we have to find that angle where the bottom one is supported relative to the vertical and we have to put that in the equation tangent of that angle equals what? All right, so notice that the cylinders are in perfect equilibrium, which means there's no force between these two right here, and they're not going to fall apart. I mean, they're not going to be pushed apart by the way to this one. They're just in perfect equilibrium right there. And notice that we're looking for the angle with the normal of the normal with respect to the vertical for cylinder two, which of course would be the same as for cylinder three. Now, how do we do that? Well, the first thing we want to do is find the centers of the three cylinders. There's one, there's two, there's three. Then if we connect those with three lines, we have ourselves an equilateral triangle where each side is equal to twice the radius of one of those small cylinders. Now notice that if we were to continue this line all the way through, all the way to here, that the bottom cylinder does not touch the big cylinder here right at that spot. Hmm. What we need to do then is draw a different triangle, draw a triangle like this. You can see that, well, maybe not quite there. Draw a little bit better, right there. There we go. So you can see here that the bottom cylinder actually touches the big cylinder at this location and we're looking for this angle right here. Now, of course, you can't see that very well. So we're going to redraw that triangle like this. That's this triangle right here. And this is the angle, let's call the angle phi, there's the vertical. This is where it touches the bottom. So then we can assume here that the normal force pushing back will be here. There will be the normal force, and that would be the normal force right here. Okay, so of course the normal force does two things. It pushes against the weight that it needs to support, and it pushes against the force that might pull the two push the two cylinders apart from one another. Now, why would they be pushed apart? Well, that's because we have this object right here, the top one pushing down on these two, so half the weight is supported by this one, half the weight is supported by this one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to draw a triangle like this. And then we're going to repeat that triangle over here, make it a little bit bigger, like so. This angle here, let's call it theta, that's the angle here, theta, because it's an equilateral triangle, that must be equal to 30 degrees. The vertical leg right here, call that F sub Y, supports half the weight of that top cylinder. So that would be mg divided by 2. This here, this leg here, supports the separation. Since it's pushing at an angle here, there's a force pushing this way, and so we'll call that F sub X. That, of course, that force is transferred onto this cylinder, both in the vertical and the horizontal direction. So now when we look over here, this here is the F in the Y direction, and that is going to be able, that's going to have to support the weight of the bottom cylinder plus half the weight of the top cylinder, so that's 3 over 2 mg for this one. And over here we have F sub x, which is the same F sub x, that's what we have over here. So basically, this weight is pushing this way here, and here the normal has to push back, so actually what I probably should do is put the arrow this way, so that the F sub x of the top pushes back on the F sub x at the bottom here, so that's your F of x, and these two must be equal to each other to keep everything at a perfect equilibrium. So what I can do for this triangle, I can say that the tangent of phi, which is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, would be F sub x divided by adjacent, which is 3 halves mg. 
What I can also do on this one here, I can say that the tangent of theta, which is 30 degrees, is equal to the opposite, which is f sub x, divided by mg over 2, or half mg. And then, of course, I can set the two f of x is equal to each other. So I can say that f of x, which is 3 halves, times the tangent of phi, and I'm missing an mg, 3 halves mg, I'm getting ahead of myself. So if I multiply this over here, I can say f sub, f sub x is equal to this. As a matter of fact, it's better if I just write it out. So I'm going to take this f of x. So f of x, let's call it, well, f of x equals f of x. So I'm going to set these two f of x is equal to each other. So I can say that the tangent of phi times 3 halves mg must equal the tangent of 30 degrees times mg over 2. And notice that the mg's cancel out on both sides. And the 2's cancel out on both sides. So that means that the tangent of phi is equal to 1 third, if I bring the 3 over here, 1 third times the tangent of 30 degrees. Now, of course, now we need to know what the tangent of 30 is, which is 1 over the square root of 3. So that means that the tangent of phi must be equal to 1 over 3 times the square root of 3. And now we have found a relationship between the angle phi, which is the angle from the, from the normal to the vertical, the angle phi between this force and the vertical. The tangent of the angle is equal to 1 over 3 times the square root of 3. For those who are interested in knowing what the value of the angle is, let's go ahead and calculate it. So we have 3 times the square root of the 3, take the inverse, and take the inverse tangent of that, which is 10.89 degrees, which means that phi equals 10.89 degrees. There we go. And so you can clearly see that it's not going to be an angle of 30 degrees that you might have thought, but an angle of only 10.89 degrees. Of course, that requires this radius to be the exact size required in relation to the small radii of the three cylinders, otherwise it can work and it cannot be in perfect equilibrium. I think on the next video we should show how to calculate the value of big R relative to the small radius. We'll do that on the next video.